Lawmaker for Mulanje South, Bon Kalindo, has come in the limelight recently because of his threat that if Parliament does not come up with tangible solutions to end attacks and killings of persons with albinism, he would walk the streets of Lilongwe naked. He claims he has received tremendous support on these plans. My guest in Insight today is Honorable Kalindo, who discussed with me these issues and also other issues concerning him being a parliamentarian while he is coming from a theatrical background. My name is Teresa Temwigandanga. Thanks for joining me. So thank you so much, Honorable Kalindo, uh, for having the time to come and uh, talk to us today in Insight. Thank you so much. Um, let's begin by uh, your journey so far as an MP. Um, you are coming from a world of theatre yes. and where you were doing specifically comedy, so to say. And now you are assuming this position where it, it, it requires some kind of seriousness. How, how are people viewing you, both from your constituency and in parliament? Uh, let me first of all say that this is a challenging job, uh, especially as we've put it already to say I'm coming from the theoretic world and where I am today as a member of parliament is, is too challenging. But I'm happy that uh, apart from the challenges, there are also other positive side, that the positive side of it that I am able you know, to articulate issues in a positive way and representing my, my people in the way that they want. Uh, very, very challenging, yes, because, you know, coming from that background, people, uh, you know, tend not to take me seriously. But uh, uh, this is what Malawi is. Uh, we tend not to take things seriously, uh, like in my case. But I'm doing fine. I am doing fine. And that, uh, the, considering that these are two different topics, to be a, a comedian and a legislator, it's a matter of you know, um, you know, planning to say this time let me let me be a comedian. Uh, like this time around, you are not talking to the comedian; you are talking to Bon Kalindo, the legislator. Right. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so recently, you have come in the limelight. Uh, first of all, because you stood in Parliament um, and uh, called for implementation of the death penalty, especially for attackers or killers. Uh, of uh, people with albinism, which today is quite a sensitive issue and a big problem for Malawi. Uh, tell me about that incident where you called fellow parliamentarians that the death penalty should be implemented in Malawi. Yes, um, I did that and I meant that uh, simply because uh, Malawians are the same people that approach issues you know, very slowly. Uh, the issue of albinos has been there for quite long. In fact, it started even the way, way back from the time we were young, but only that there was no media. The, the people lacked voice, but this time if you are coming in, the media, a lot of radio stations and TV stations, the issues now are coming to light. Uh, the albinos started being killed a long time ago, and like this time that people are now able to voice. Um, Malawi is a very, very pathetic country where we don't consider issues of human rights, especially uh, the, for the poor, seriously. We don't uh, make laws that would, do, you know, at the end of the time, benefit a poor man. Uh, but uh, our laws here in Malawi are there, you know, to, to benefit the rich people. So um, after, you know, giving the, a, a second thought, I thought I should do the right thing and stand for those poor Malawians out there and speak loudly that this death penalty should come because uh, it is very, very unbecoming that our people, uh, especially those living with albinism, should be slaughtered by, like chickens, being hunted each and every day like they are animals. Uh, to me, I feel this is not on. And as, as a country, we are not doing enough because it requires only one word from someone to make things right. So I stood, yes, in Parliament to, to you know, to lobby and, and, and urge my fellow parliamentarians, you know, to, you know, to remind this country, maybe we have forgotten that we have this law and we are not using it. Why? Who are we trying to please? Why are we uh, trying to pretend that as if things are not are well on the, ground, on the ground when things are not well? Mm -hmm. so yes, yes, I did exactly that for my people and for Malawians, especially the poor. And, and, and to prove your seriousness, you threatened to walk out of Parliament. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, okay. Something that I did. Uh, because when he, the petition came, 
uh, on the table. Uh, the way the speaker handled the whole thing all together, it did not please me because I expected a heated debate considering the nature of the matter, considering that this is very a sensitive matter or a state of emergency. Could have been given a priority to say members of parliament should give be given chance to debate, but it was like some few minutes and it ended there. So I protested and walked out of the parliament. What would you have wanted to see Parliament do specifically? Yes, uh, to, to, to first of all recognize our role as members of Parliament. That we are there, you know, uh, to, accom uh, uh, to accomplish a mission, to, to make sure that laws are in order, to make laws that will be good for the nation. But look now, we are there drinking tea, receiving allowances, when someone in your village, and my village, is suffering. Had it been uh, those killed where like the activists, those in high position, what would happen? Uh, the law could have been retained. But this time, because uh, those killed are the poor, uh, then uh, we are playing games. That's not on for a country like this one, where most of us are poor. Mm -hmm. yes. um, do you think Parliament will ever debate and come to concrete solutions in this, in this, on this matter? If we are, as legislators, join hands, that would come to pass because our law, the main law, is to, to, to look into the laws if they are working and if they are being used. This law, the death penalty law, has been in our constitution for years now. And why is it that we are not using it? It tells you that Malawi has got laws to please rich people. Malawi has got laws to please a white person. Up to when are we going to be in that bondage? that we should be being root, you know, from the back by the white. It's now time for us to wake up. This is the only Malawi that we have. Mm -hmm. And it is good for the young generation like us to wake up and fight for our people. We shouldn't repeat the same mistakes that our forefathers did. It's going to be a very great mistake, a huge one for our children and for your children, my children too. So the need for us to wake up and, and force, force parliament to debate this and but this issue once and for all. What you are advocating for is something that has been sticky in the past because uh, people have argued if we implement the death penalty then we might also not be respecting the human right, uh, especially the right to life of those particular people that were put into death. That's very, very laughable. And now you want to tell me, or the Malawi would want to tell me now, that we are respecting respecting a, a, a right for someone who has who is killing people, not the uh, uh, not uh, right for someone who has been killed. We need to, to to see the truth. Who are we protecting? Because the one who has been killed has got also right. The one who is killing has got also right. So the death penalty is there that, and the, it has been there for years to say. If he, someone has killed someone, and this particular person must also be killed. It's a simple mathematics. And I don't know why are we not implementing this. So it's very, very, you know, sad that as a country we have chosen, you know, to move this path. I don't know. Is this the Malawi that we want? And what picture are we sending outside? Just listen to this issue was on CNN. And Malawians are being hunted like animals. Is this what we want? Is this the way that we should move this country? This is, it is, you know, absolutely nonsense that we should move like the way we are doing. You have taken your advocacy on this issue a step further by, uh, you told us, Jose Nizona, uh, that's a radio program on, on Zodiac Radio, that uh, you would walk naked, protest naked, if Parliament doesn't come up with tangible solutions uh, uh, to end the killings, the attacks on people with urbanism. Tell me how serious that is. This is very, very serious. And it is very, very sad again that most Malawians are not taking this thing seriously. And I'm not surprised. Some are castigating on social media. Some are saying this. But I'm happy that I have received overwhelming support. That some people are to fly. Some will come from from South Africa. Some will come all the way from England just for this. This is a serious thing. And the, uh, uh, those in authority should work up because it's going to be something big. And if, he, if they are not taking actions, then the Malawians will have no other option but to take the law into our hands because we are tired. Malawians are tired. The way I've seen things after I've 
made that statement. I have observed that Malawians are tired and they are willing to go uh, and, and do anything that they want to do for the sake of, you know, the issue, uh, burning this issue to do with the killings, abduction of people living with uh, Abinism. When you say you have received uh, tremendous support and people who come, even from abroad, to come and participate in this protest of yours, are these people also going to walk naked or they will just support you? S some will support me and some will walk naked. Because this is not, uh, let me just uh, warn you, this is not a bad issue. It's a national issue. Some are like, you know, taking this issue to say it's the DPP that is involved, MCP, uh, UDF. No, 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 no. The, the ones to make a statement are Malawians. Malawians are there to make a statement, not uh, people from, from any party. So this is not a DPP thing. And if the president does not make laws, the president is like receiving an already cooked food. So we have got the responsibility as legislators to go in the house and amend or make sure that we tell the president that this law must start being used. Full but stop. You, but you realize that um, right now, if the president decides uh, to start implementing that law, he would essentially just by pending his signature to all the death penalty uh, sentences that are there. And, and by you taking to the streets naked, you are essentially protesting against your president, your DPP president. Um, uh, that's, that's how you are taking it. But I'm not protesting against him. I am protesting against the barbaric act, the killings of people, those innocent people and children, children especially children and women. Is this what we want? I'm only protesting against that. It will be upon the president to, to put the signature, signature or not. It will be upon, up, upon him. But I am not forcing or fighting with the president. And moreover, he doesn't make laws. He is only uh, there to implement what parliament has discussed. Full stop. Think, think of children. Think of those uh, innocent women, uh, men, being butchered in a daylight. Like the one, uh, the, the, the Nche one. Yeah, that was something I don't know. So we need to work up. If this is the only time that we can work up and, and in make a statement, if we cannot make a statement, then uh, I see no reason why Parliament should be there. It, it, there is need to abolish Parliament, Malawi Parliament, because uh, it means all of us are the abductors and the killers of our binos. It means all of us. We are there we, without knowing what we are there for. We are blind. We don't, we don't know exactly why our people sent us to Parliament. Why did you have to choose an extreme way of protesting against what seems to be something that you're so passionate about? People have spoken, even the president has spoken vehemently on this issue to say we must stop this barbaric act, but people are not listening. So uh, I have chosen to go this way, to force parliament and force Malawi and those that, that, those that are involved to say we must stop this and again force parliament to, you know, to bring back the death penalty full stop mm -hmm. yes um you realize also that while you'll be walking on the in the streets on the streets of malawi naked you also be demonstrating some indecency right um that is according to you but according to me uh and for your own information it's not happening happening for the first time uh other countries have been doing that uh, in the way they want to protest because I've got the right we've got the right to protest in any way that we want So I have chosen to be naked on this day and I mean it if those that are listening Watching us and are taking us taking me seriously Then they should just keep quiet other than you know putting nonsense on a, on a social media to say ah, Look at that one in the word drama. He's trying to come up with a, a new movie. That's nonsense and that is why, because of that mentality, that is why Malawi is still in the dark continent. That's why Malawi cannot develop. Why should you kill another person and, you, uh, and in the end you, 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 you back that person? Are we insane? Have you got an authority uh, 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 to be able to stage this kind of project? Uh, meanwhile, we are in the planning stages and we want to follow all the protocols and reach there. And they, when, they, when all is said and done, Malawians will be informed, uh, especially 
on the date and where, meeting place, up to parliament. So we, we don't just do things for the sake of doing them. Uh, I have Malawians of good that are you know you know uh, willing to help me as uh, 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 and this time there is also a team from South Africa that is flying shortly next week in Malawi uh, to to see and how best we can handle the issues before the dead. Mm -hmm. And and when do do you decide the date? Because I, there is a condition that you have put forward. If Parliament does not bring back the death penalty, then I will take to the streets naked. But then, then Parliament might take a year. It might take months before they decide to actually do what you advocate. Yeah, if the Parliament is stupid enough, that they are not patriotic enough, they would keep that thing under their what? Under the, the carpet. But if, if members there are serious, they would handle this issue with speed and make sure that it has come to a conclusion. I don't think that members are stupid that they don't want to, you know, to, 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 to debate and, you know, give Malawians, you know, uh, at least hope. Yes. So how long are you willing to wait? Will it be a month, two weeks? Um, uh, as I've indicated to say, we are in the planning stages. Uh, we want to, to, to plan and present our issues uh, in, two, in two, three weeks' time, the much anticipated demonstration will take place. So briefly, I know you are, you're saying you are in the planning stages, but briefly, um, where will this march take place? And, and what is the basic plan? Of uh, the, the march will take place in Lilongwe, and uh, people will be told where to meet, and uh, our aim is not to steal, our aim is not to, you know, to cause problems, but to march peacefully to Parliament. And uh, uh, we are so planning to have a vigil there, will be sleeping right at the gate to make sure that uh, this, come as, this issue has come to a conclusion and that members have debated and come up with the, what we want. What we want is nothing else. Uh, we don't want to have uh, um, uh, civic education on the same. We don't want to have demonstrations on the same. We don't, have to, to, we don't want to have research on the same. What we want is members of parliament to bring back the death sentence. Full stop. Period. A simple mathematics. Right. Yes. Um, um, I'm going to ask you a, a, a rather personal question. Um, no, go ahead. You are, you are very free to do that. Have you told your family about this? What, what's your family thinking about it? Your children, your wife? Um, <laughs> I am a man with principles. Uh, what you are thinking in your head is not what I am thinking. So uh, sometimes it's better to come up, come up with decisions that you see that are right. So I came up with this, this decision without consultation because I know women, I know my family members that they would protest to that. But all what I'm doing is, you know, uh, to bear Malawians uh, as a member of parliament. I'm there to stand for them, uh, to, to protect, make laws that would protect them. So I did not consult anyone because I know what I am doing is right. But then afterwards, they heard it from the media, mm -hmm. you didn't cause them, but they know now that they, they you essentially know. you're going to, to do this. Yeah, and they, they have phoned already to ask me on the same, I have responded yes. Because it is my right to, right. to, to do whatever I think I am doing right. Right. Yes. And, and are they in support now? They are. Ma many of them are in support. They are very, very happy because we are talking of a life of a person. You, assuming you, you are living this place now and you reach home and, and, and that people will tell you to say somebody has been killed in your own house, how do you feel? Take this issue, uh, the Albina issue, in your own shoes. Take be in the Albina shoes. How do you feel that people just to be killed like that, the way they are doing, and government is not taking stand? When we have the whole police, we have the whole army, and we have the you know the law in place to say this this should apply to someone who has killed somebody. Is this, is are we are we thinking positively? So yes, uh, this will happen. Uh, people must have patience to 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 see to it that uh, 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 this has come to pass. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you also realize that this might actually get you in trouble and probably maybe arrested as well. I don't mind, provided I'm speaking the truth. The problem in Malawi is that we are cowards. 
most politicians are cowards. Most people, especially Malawians out there, most of us are cowards. We are good at speaking. We, do, we don't walk the talk. Um, if I am to be arrested, so what? Because it's not going to be you or somebody who is, who is watching this program who is going to be arrested. It will be, it will be born Kalido. So what? Um, I will be arrested for a good cause that I'm fighting for Malawians, uh, especially the, the Albinos. Uh, if he's going to be me kicked out of parliament, yes, I am very ready. Because I am a reader and I should you know, represent the views of the people. They should come first before me. And that is why there is need for our parliament to be serious. Because some of the issues that are discussed in the House are not, you know, uh, to benefit people, but ourselves as politicians. So we get richer and richer. Malawi get poorer and poorer. Mm -hmm. That's not on. So um, I am ready for anything. And even if I'm to be killed, no problem. Uh, God is my witness. He's going he's gonna, to, you know, uh, protect me. Uh, you know, and if I'm to be taken, I'll be, I'll be with him. Uh, be, because I have even, you know, reports that some are planning to do the evil thing. So they are ready. I am ready to receive whatever has come from them. But I cannot sit here and watch people being killed like chickens. That I will not accept. I'm just young as I am, but I've got a big heart and passion for the country. What kind of support would you want from those that would buy uh, your idea? People should come because there will be no money. There will be no investment. People should come to show love and, uh, uh, and that uh, they are patriotic enough because uh, we are Malawians. And uh, it will be, you know, um, a, a naked match uh, demonstration that would invite people from the northern region, central region, southern region. Those that know that are Malawians of goodwill should come and participate because we are doing something that we know is going to benefit us, not anyone, not a white person, but it's going to benefit Malawians. Let's uh, finish the program by discussing something else. And uh, this issue has also been quite controversial in the district that uh, you're coming from, Mulanji. Um, and this is to do with Mulanji Mountain. You have been in a tussle with the Mulanji Conservation Trust. And you want them out. Recently you said you wanted them out of the district. The district. What, what exactly is the problem? The, the problem is that uh, MMCT is playing games, is playing with us. Oh, they came to Mulangi some 17 years ago with an aim to protect that beautiful mountain. The only heritage that we have in Malawi. But uh, over the years, they have been, you know, playing games to say they are conserving the mountain. But for us that are there, they are not conserving the mountain. They have actually destroyed the beautiful mountain. Um, uh, this is evidenced by the number of people that are coming to Mulanji, especially the tourists from around the world. Uh, the time in memorial, when we were young, we used to have you know, a lot of tourists coming to Mulanji. Come to Mulanji today, go and make your own research. You would not find uh, anyone on the mountain because the, the, the beauty, the flora and fauna that used to be there, completely gone. And the, if you are to come to Mulanji, right at the bomb, this time, there is a scarcity of water that tells you that something wrong up, up there. Something is wrong up there. The trees are no longer there. Uh, we've had had, you know, uh, organizations like uh, World Vision, GTZ, that, used, that, that came to Mulanji way back. And they had a similar, you know, concept of planting trees. We appreciate uh, uh, the role that they played because we are able to see the trees even now. But uh, if, if, you are, if you are to ask about Mulanji um, um, uh, Conservation Trust, they have never, not even a single tree, planted a single tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, why should they bring science on that mountain to say they've got the capacity to plant cedar tree? Uh, cedar, cedar tree is the most wanted a tree in the world and is is found in Lebanon and Malawi and Malawi being Mulanji. That's why it is called Mulanji cedar because you cannot plant it. It does on its own and not everywhere but on Mulanji mountain. And these people have been playing, lying to, to the donors, eating donor money to say they have got the capacity to, to plant the, the cedar tree. And you think that is not true? It is not true. You okay. make your own research. It is not true. Cedar does its own. It, it does grow on its own. 
Right, but it, it does also need some care, which the Mulanje Mountain Conservation Trust claims to be providing. Uh, so which care are they talking about? Uh, I want to give you an assignment that you, 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 you ask your bosses and leave for Mulanje. Go hike on the mountain and see what is there. Because we, we are talking. It is better to do this program right there and see for yourself. Uh, these people have lied to us, have lied to the, to the donors. They have, you know, uh, eaten donor money uh, in the name of Mulanje Mountain. When the mountain is not what it used to be. What it used to be. Uh, uh, there were times when people would come, um, visitors would come to have bird watching. This time around you cannot find a, a single bird on Mulanje Mountain. Because uh, what used to, you know, to make this bird to be there is no longer there. There are no trees. But if there is no authority in Mulanje, specifically to conserve Mulanje Mountain and uh, what's in Mulanje Mountain, mm. uh, don't you think then you go the direction of further destruction? Who was taking care of the mountain before the MMCT? We were taking care of that mountain ourselves. And it was looking beautiful. And why did the MMCT come? Why did they come? They come because they, they, they saw the beauty of the, the mountain. So we were taking care of it. Because it's, it's something that we know is ours. We were taking care of it. And no one was, was cutting down trees. Do you think you will succeed though in this campaign to have them kicked out of the district? We will succeed. Because we, uh, eventually we will take the affairs of, uh, of the mountain ourselves. And take care of it. Honorable Kalindo, as we conclude, um, on a lighter note, uh, I heard you in Parliament when you were making your contribution call yourself Magofoli. Yes, 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 uh, yes. Tell me about that. I admire the guy because he's got principles that, will, that would benefit a lot, uh, especially to Tanzanians. So uh, I would like someday to be like him, uh, uh, to have, you know, to inherit what he is doing. He's a very good leader, and, and I, I don't mind you calling me Magofoli. Honorable Bonkalindo Bonkofoli. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.